Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, hello everybody. I think I have at least one other and maybe a couple of other videos out there that I've made different kinds of brioche. I just came across this recipe. Uh, it's made in a food processor, so I had to give it a try. It makes one loaf. Um, if you've never had brioche, it makes the world's best toast and definitely the best French toast. Uh, lots of enrichments added, which is why it's called a brioche instead of a bread. There's sugar and butter and milk, eggs added to it. but. It appears to be quite simple made in the, in the food processor, so I'm going to give it a go. If you're thinking you might like to make this, this might be a good time to pause and get a pen and paper. It's once again a recipe that's coming from a book, uh, so I won't be able to put a, a link below and to copy out the um, recipe below the video is a copyright violation. So. It's quite simple, very few ingredients, and uh, the method isn't that difficult, but you might want a pen and paper. It's coming out of this book, the How to Bake book. I think I recently did another video with a recipe out of it. It's been on my bookshelf for 30 years or more, probably. So I don't know if it's still in print. You may be able to find a copy in your local library or whatever. But, as I said, I won't be able to put anything down below, so... If you think you might want to try this, you should take some notes. Well, to get started, I'll run through the list of ingredients here. There's a half cup of milk, two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast, and I'm just using the regular active dry yeast. I normally use an instant yeast, but I had both, and this is what it called for, so that's what I'm using. And also, if you buy it in those little sachets or envelopes or whatever, that's one one package of it. Two and a half, or excuse me, two and a quarter cups of uh, all-purpose flour, not bread flour, but all-purpose flour. Six tablespoons of unsalted butter. Uh, three tablespoons of sugar. A half teaspoon of salt and two large eggs. Uh, that is the ingredients. The first thing that we make is a sponge um, the other names, anyway, a sponge is, is a, some flour and, and uh, a liquid and, and your yeast mixed to, to prove together. It has other names, a biga is one of them. I can't think of any others right now, but this particular book calls it a sponge, so it's quite easy to make. We'll do that now. I think I might have just discovered how old this book is. I should look in the front of it and see when it was published, but evidently microwaves were not very popular when it was published. It says to put the milk in a small saucepan and increase the temperature to 110 degrees. Well, I did just for the fun of it measure the temperature and I do have around 110 right now, but just tap it to your finger. Um, maybe even a bit cooler than bath water. I did it in the microwave with me. It was three 10 second bursts in my microwave and brought it up to a little bit higher, but by the time I sloshed it around in the cup, it had gone back to 110. And I'll add the yeast. Just sort of whisk that in. And one cup of the flour. sort of makes a, a very wet dough with a lot of yeast in it for the amount of flour that there is. Okay. Get off my thumb here. 
And that just gets covered and set aside while we prepare to use it. Okay, so that's set aside and now we're going to carry on with the rest of the process here. I have the blade, the steel blade, in my ancient food processor. Into that I'm going to put the six tablespoons of butter. I cut it into some cubes. It says six to eight pieces of mine. I guess I have more pieces than that. The half teaspoon of salt. three tablespoons of sugar. I would say if you don't have unsalted butter, use your salted butter and eliminate that salt that I just added there. I just happened to have some today, so that is what I used. Now this gets pulsed at one second in the it says. when I was doing my pulsing. I guess there isn't too much attached to the sides. Mind you, if I bring it all out on the spatula, it's not going to improve anything either. Now you add the eggs. Uh, one at a time while it's running on low. down again. It says it may look curdled at this point, but this doesn't appear to. And the solution for that was to uh, just let it run a little longer, and then it also says it may continue to look curdled. They covered all the bases, in other words. Okay. And now add the remaining flour. Combine it. Hmm, it's nice and smooth. Scrape down a little bit again. There isn't much. There isn't much accumulating on the sides, thankfully. And the last addition is that uh, flour and yeast. Milk that we did a little earlier. Scrape that out with a rubber spatula. Hopefully, get it down in there. Try to get all of it. a few times to get it combined and then you let it run for at least 15 seconds to mix it. And mine is not going to combine because it's in there in one big piece. Huh? Let's see if I can't break it up some.
those eggs in there. The, the batter's a nice rich yellow color anyway. This goes into an 8 inch loaf pan. I rarely ever have the right size, but it so happens that the little Pyrax loaf pan that I have just happens to be an 8 inch one. And I have sprayed it with one of those kitchen oil sprays. I don't buy the big brand name one if you know what I'm talking about. They're all the same, just usually canola canola oil that you can spray on things. Well, I think that's just about all of it. Close enough, I guess. Now, turn it over on itself a few times. Get some flour on it. surface to be all that tacky either. And it says to try to get a rectangle roughly nine inches by three inches. And I'm not going to measure. The pan is eight, so that's close to nine there, I guess. I think close to three. Make a seam down the middle. Fold one half into that, and the other half into that, and pinch those together. And you bring this bottom piece, I think they said bottom piece, I don't see any difference if you go with bottom or top up to about halfway. And the top piece comes down and overlaps that. And then you try to pinch those together as well. That goes in the loaf pan. A little extra flour just then on the top of it. And using your hand, you press it down in the loaf pan. It went in seam side down. You use your hand to press it down the size of the bottom of the loaf pan. So far so good. Now it gets covered and allowed to rise for at least an hour. You want it more than double in bulk if possible. So the oven gets preheated to 350 degrees sometime during this hour because that's the temperature that we're going to be baking it at. I think it's set on the uh, middle rack in the oven. And I'll bring you back in an hour's time and we'll see if this did any rising or not. Well, it has more than doubled uh, in height. You can see along the side there. It's not near the top of the uh, dish, but I'm going to 
put it in the oven see what happens. There are a lot of large air bubbles there, so I'm hoping for a good amount of oven spring. We'll see what it looks like when it comes out. It says to make one slash with a razor blade, and I always slash my sourdough loaves anyway, so I happen to have a razor blade available. I think it's too soft of a dough that you could do it with a sharp knife, so if you haven't got a razor blade, I don't know. You could try it with a knife, but other than that, I wouldn't worry too much about it. The top just might look a little different, that's all. It says to start about an inch from the end, one slash, and finish about an in inch from that end as well. So I will now put it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, trying to find out how long it says here. 40 to 45 minutes, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it did rise to the top of the pan anyway. Now it is allowed to just sit there in the pan for five minutes before I turn it out. It's had its five minute rest. It came out quite easily, I sort of thought it might. Recommended is to let it cool on its side. Brioche is a very soft, delicate loaf and will collapse on its own weight if you let it cool off just sitting on the bottom of the, of the loaf. So I'll wait until it is completely cooled until I cut it, but it certainly feels to be nice and soft anyway. Bring you back once it has completely cooled. Well, it is cooled. It's still a little bit warm to the touch, but cooled enough to cut, I think. I'm going to cut it in half first. Take a look at the interior here. Yellow, all that butter and the eggs, anyway. Very soft. One thing about brioche, you don't need to butter your bread, <laughs> there's already enough richness in it. And I'm going to try a slice with some of my black currant jam, no additional butter. say before, black currant is my favorite jam. I get enough every year to make a, a batch off of my own black currants. light as air. Lovely flavor. I love brioche because of the, the nice butter flavor in it, I guess. All the other richness, the eggs and things too. But This will be definitely enjoyed. It'll make, I know it will make excellent toast. I don't know if I'll actually make any French toast out of this one or not, but it also makes very good French toast. delicious. Well, if you give this a try, let me know how it turns out for you. I think just a couple of things to keep in mind is the temperature of the milk. When you're adding the uh, yeast to it, you don't want it to be too hot. You'll kill the yeast, but I did take the temperature, but that's not necessary. You stick your finger in it, and if it's just tepid warm, that's good enough. The other thing, it says to let it rise for an hour. I think you should always ignore that. Let it rise until it's at least double. Now in my kitchen, which is kind of cool this time of year, I was closer to two hours than an hour. So it depends on the temperature of your, of your kitchen. If yours is a nice warm kitchen this time of year, it'll, probably an hour will be enough. But go more by the amount that the bread has risen rather than the time that's given there. And I found the 40 minutes to be just about right in the oven at 350. It's nice and brown all around, including the bottom. It's not 
not scorched anywhere or anything, just a nice color. So if you make it, let me know how it turned out for you. And thank you very much for watching.